Um, welcome today. My name is Sophie Lowe. I'm the director of the McNeil Academic Program, and it is my pleasure to congratulate you on your admission to CU Boulder. We're honored to be a part of your journey. We appreciate seeing what each of you brings to campus, who you are, and who you become when you graduate. All of our program staff and faculty are continually inspired by our students. We're really happy that you could join us today. This is exciting for us. We normally would first meet with you during Admitted Student Day. Um, so we thank you for being open um, to this webinar format. We're really glad that you're here. We do miss being able to interact with you face to face. Um, and we regret that this is a bit one way that you can kind of start getting familiar with us, but we can't see who you are. So we, it does feel a little bit lacking. Um, but let's start with a quick overview of how we're gonna work with Zoom today. So um, you please ask questions through the Q&A. Just press that, that, that button. And these questions can be seen by everyone participating in today's session. And if you'd like to pose a question privately to the panelists, use the chat feature. Um, and so McNeil staff will be monitoring these questions throughout, but most of the questions and answers we'll get to towards the end of the webinar. So I'd like you to meet who um, the McNeil team who is presenting today. Um, if McNeil students and staff, please introduce yourself. Staff, if you could share where you went to college and students mention how you chose CU. So I'll go ahead and start. Um, my name is Sophie Lowe. I grew up in Southern California. Um, I did my undergraduate degree at the University of California, Irvine, and I went to graduate school at San Francisco State University. I moved to Colorado over 20 years ago. And when I started at CU, I could combine my experience working with diverse populations with um, higher education. Paula? Hey everyone, my name is Paula Abitia. I'm a program coordinator with McNeil. I completed both my undergraduate and my graduate work at CU Boulder. I'm a Denver native, born and raised, and I always wanted to go to CU because it was my dream school growing up in Colorado. Um, it was where I wanted to be, and I'm happy that I'm still able to be at CU now as a professional staff member. Hi, my name is Sherelle Johnson. I'm originally from St. Louis, Missouri. I attended my undergrad at Fontbonne University in St. Louis. It's a small liberal arts college. I then went on to St. Louis University and pursued both my master's and my doctoral degree. After my doctoral degree was completed in 2017, I moved to the Colorado area and I'm excited to be at CU Boulder. Hello, I'm Laura Lee. I'm a graduate assistant. I did my undergrad at University of Denver. I chose that college because it was just close to home. I am born and raised from, in Denver. And I'm currently doing my master's in higher education here at CU Boulder. And I'm almost done, so I'm excited. Hi, everyone. I'm Brian Dang. Um, I'm a fourth year here. I'm an economics major with a quantitative emphasis with a math minor. Um, the reason why I chose Boulder was it's because it was my first choice, and most of my family are CU alums. Hi guys, my name is Blaze Hokanen and I'm a senior um, studying political science with a minor in economics. And the reason I chose CU is because they gave me a really good financial package and I also um, am from Denver, so it was really close to home. What's up everybody? My name is Joe Lamphy. I'm a junior from Aurora, Colorado, majoring in finance and accounting at the Leeds School of Business. I chose CU because it is close to home and it has always been a dream of mine to attend it ever since I saw the campus in sixth grade. Hi, everybody. My name is Nuvia Mendoza. Um, I'm a senior at CU, and I'm double majoring in political science and Spanish. And I chose CU because it was just a university I always wanted to go to, and it was also financially feasible, feasible for me in terms of financial aid. Thanks, everybody. Um, you'll get a chance to hear more from each of us during the webinar. But real quickly, um, I want to do, we'll go over the agenda. Um, for today, our program includes a program overview, a chance to talk more with our students, and then questions and answers. 
So the McNeil program is an academic community on campus housed in the Student Academic Success Center. We accept about 100 students per year and we work with students until graduation. So that means there's about 400 students in our program at any given time. And this large group of students serves as a strong network and resource for you as you start at CU. I'd like to mention a few of our program values. One is getting to know you as an individual. In the classroom, with our faculty, at our events, through staff, we're gonna notice when you show up, we, we're gonna know who you are, we're gonna know your name. You're not gonna just be a number um, lost in um, a huge group of students. We, we really value knowing who you are. The second value I'd like to mention is academic excellence, where we expect students to excel and will provide support so that you have the tools you need to reach your goals. And the third value is diversity, that our program is built on valuing each person's individual experience and background. So as you listen today, watch and notice how each of these values show up. So we'd like to move on to discussing more about our program. Here's Paula Abitia, program coordinator, to share more about what we do. Paula? Thank you, Sophie. Hi, everyone. Again, my name is Paula Bitia. I am a program coordinator with McNeil. I'm also an alum of CU, and I'm an alum of the McNeil program. When I was a McNeil scholar, I served as a peer mentor and an undergraduate instructor assistant, and I was able to develop leadership skills while a McNeil student. And McNeil really was my home away from home. Um, as a first-generation college student, had a hard time navigating a large institution like CU Boulder and McNeil was there for me every step of the way. And I'm so thankful to now work as a program coordinator and continue to support the program that did so much for me. So to start, this image I have on the screen is a wordle of words that our students have used to describe who we are and what we do. Um, some that I notice immediately are community, support, leadership, and classes. And hopefully as we go through this presentation, you'll be able to see why our students describe us in these ways. So first and foremost, we are a community of scholars. So McNeil has been on campus for more than 30 years in a variety of different iterations. We've evolved from a one-year program to a comprehensive four-year program. We're an academic community committed to academic excellence, as Sophie just mentioned. We have high academic standards for our students because we know that all of our students can achieve this level of work. And we really value getting to know our students as individuals and honoring what you all bring with you to campus. Like Sophie said in McNeil, you won't be lost or anonymous. In all of our program aspects, we know who you are and you won't be lost in the crowd. Sophie also mentioned, we really value our diverse community we're excited to work with you and see how you engage on main campus as well as in the McNeil program. Uh, your background and your talents are really what's needed on campus to further expand the knowledge base in all areas of study. And then another key component of our program is our student-centered innovat innovative instruction. So our students take classes with instructors whose work is based on best practices. So we offer courses in writing and STEM and math. And our courses are small and allow for more one-to-one -one interaction with instructors. Our courses are capped at about 25 students and all classes also have undergraduate instructor assistance. Um, it's just more embedded support in the courses that we offer. So it's not this huge overwhelming ex experience like some of your lecture courses on main campus might feel like. Our classes are community oriented and include a significant amount of active student participation. We offer extensive academic support outside of the classroom as well. So we also provide individualized guidance. So all students are assigned a coordinator who will work with them during the entire duration of their time at CU. And coordinators can support students with personal, professional, and academic planning. We can assist with course registration. We can guide you to resources that help you navigate um, kind of common college challenges that students face. The students also work with a peer mentor who can give them more peer individualized support. So I'm a coordinator, my colleague, Dr. Cheryl Johnson is a coordinator and Sophie is also a coordinator as well.
And then each year we have a number of events for students to support their academic and professional goals. We have a number of student leadership groups, including our student advisory board. We have a pre-health group. We also just started a pre-law group for students who are interested in entering a career in law. We also have our peer mentor program. You'll hear from Brian in a little bit who currently serves as a peer mentor. So as I mentioned, we are a comprehensive four-year program, and these are some of our program components. I do want to draw your attention to two of them. Um, I've talked a little bit about instruction, coordination, and leadership development, but I also wanted to talk about um, the employment opportunities that we have. So all of our students with us today currently work in our front office. So that is something that we offer. We also have a few employment opportunities in our student leadership groups. We also have pretty extensive academic support and academic community. So we offer support that comes in the form of group study sessions and help labs. We have a math help room and a STEM help room that's staffed by undergraduate instructor assistants as well as instructors. We have a computer lab and a study lounge and these designated study spaces really facilitate group work and the building of that academic community that we value so much. Now I wanted to take some time to talk about who our students are. So our students are leaders across campus and engaged in a variety of different enrichment opportunities. So each semester our students are studying abroad, they're working in research labs, they're completing internships, they're just engaged in a variety of ways. Um, so I want to highlight just a few examples. So if you take a look at this top right picture, this is one of our former student leaders, Michael, and he completed an internship in Columbia over the summer where he worked with families and young children as part of a Ronald McDonald program at a Colombian hospital. And then the other picture is of our students who completed an embedded study abroad program to the Dominican Republic. So this was offered as part of one of our under um, one of our undergraduate writing courses for first year students. So all semester they're learning about the Dominican Republic and Dominican history and then over spring break they actually have the opportunity to travel to the DR. Uh, the year that this picture was taken I was fortunate enough to attend with the students and on this day we got to play baseball with some local Dominican kids and we got beat pretty badly but it was a really fun opportunity and a great experience for our students and just another example of the ways in which our students are engaged on campus. So questions that were frequently asked are, how do students join McNeil? Or how was I chosen to be in McNeil? So there are three main ways. The first is through the Office of Admissions. So as admission counselors are reviewing admission applications, if they see that you talk about a desire to belong to a multicultural community, or you, real, or you really value diversity, or you really value community, maybe you have a lot of leadership experience and that's something that means a lot to you, then the admission counselor will refer your application to us, we'll review it and see if we think that our program is a good fit for you, if it's somewhere that you can thrive, if it's somewhere where you can further develop those leadership skills, and then we'll reach out to you. So that's one way that students join McNeil. The second way is through self-referral. So a lot of our students have friends who are in McNeil or they hear about the resources that we offer and they're interested in having access to those resources. So they'll self-select to join McNeil and go through an application process. And then the third way is a scholarship requirement. So many of our students are recipients of the Denver Scholarship Foundation Scholarship, or they participated in the pre-collegiate development program. Um, and all those students have to join a program similar to McNeil. So they'll complete an application process and join McNeil um, via that way. Okay, and next I want to walk you through these next steps, this checklist that we have. So if you've decided that CU Boulder is the right fit for you, that this is the institution you want to attend, you'll want to pay attention to this checklist. These are things that you're going to have to do um, in order to be here in the fall. So the first thing you'll want to do is to confirm your intent to enroll at CU Boulder. There's instructions here of how you do that. 
I do want to let you know that when you confirm your intent to enroll, you do have to pay a $200 enrollment deposit, um, but you can request an extension. If you can't pay that right now, um, that's totally okay. That doesn't have to stop you from confirming your intent to enroll. You would just need to contact the Office of Admissions and we have admissions contact information right there. So you can email them. Given that we're all working remotely, that might be the best way to connect with them and just request a confirmation extension form when you reach out to them. You'll also want to submit your housing application as soon as you can if you're planning on living on campus. Uh, similar to confirming your intent to enroll, you do have to pay a deposit, but there is an extension for that as well. You will just need to reach out to housing um, and request to defer the housing, depo the housing deposit. Uh, we included housing's contact information there as well. It's probably the best way to connect with any of our offices right now. You'll also want to sign up to register for courses. So you will register for courses over the summer. In order to do that, you'll need to complete the new student welcome online experience, specifically how advising works, how registration works, and then you'll select a registration date that works best for you. You should have already started receiving some communication from the new student welcome office. You'll also need to attend the McNeil Summer Launch Program. So this is a one day event over the summer where you can meet more of the McNeil staff, students and faculty, learn a little bit more in depth about our program and gain guidance in registering for your fall courses. We're available to help you build your schedule. Attendance is required to our summer, to our summer launch events. Um, these sessions will be held at the end of June. Registration will open soon which, once we have um, a better idea of what that program will look like. You'll also want to pay attention to any communication that you get from financial aid. Um, make sure that they have all the documentation that they need from you. It's not a bad idea to be proactive and reach out to them to see if you're missing anything. Um, make sure you've completed your FAFSA if you haven't already. And yeah, just confirm that they're not missing any, any documentation from you. It's really important that you maintain communication with that office. And for our in-state students, make sure that you have applied for the College Opportunity Fund stipend. We've included the website where you can learn more about what that entails um, and if you're looking for more information. And then finally, if you've changed your phone number or address, just let us know, shoot us an email. We like to have the most up-to-date information for you because we will be contacting you a lot during the summer. Uh, before we move on, I did want to go back to the housing application um, and let you know that McNeil does have a partnership with the Health Professions Residential Academic Program. So if you're a student who's interested in pre-health or entering um, a health professional field after you graduate, and you might be interested in living and learning with students who also share that interest, we do have a limited number of beds in the Health Professions Residential Academic Program. If this at all seems interesting to you, you can go to our website on the Joining McNeil tab and there's more information there. Um, and you can contact us if you have more questions about that, but did just want to plug that opportunity for you all. Okay, now I'm gonna pass it over to my colleague, Dr. Sherelle Johnson, who's gonna facilitate the next part of our program. Thank you, Paula. Um, so now we're going to have our Q&A session. Um, Sophie, Paula, and I could probably talk to you about um, how great and awesome the McNeil program is until we're blue in the face. However, we thought it would be better if you could hear from current students so that you can get a better idea of what McNeil is and how we work together on campus to make sure that you have the best student and academic experience. So what I'm gonna do is have our panelists introduce themselves. They're also going to tell you how they got into, in, into the McNeil program um, and if they're involved in anything else on campus. So let's go ahead and we will start with Brian. Hi hey guys, um, just like I said, um, an economics major with a quantitative emphasis and a math minor. Um, how I got into McNeil was I got through admissions because I probably express interest in, in multicultural stuff. Um, what I'm involved in through McNeil is I'm an IA. What that means is you're just basically a teacher assistant where you help students 
make sure that they get their understanding, make sure they do their homework. Um, also, I'm a peer mentor, as Paula mentioned, so I will be interacting with a lot of you guys, maybe. Um, and then lastly, I work in the front office. So um, if I got, if you guys got a phone call, that was probably from me or any of all of us. And then lastly, I'm in VSA, which is the Vietnamese Student Association Club on main campus. Thank you, Brian. Blaze? Hi guys, again, my name is Blaze and I'm a senior studying political science with a minor in economics. And um, the way I got into McNeil was my Denver Scholarship Foundation advisor at, in high school um, at Thomas Jefferson High School uh, referred me to the program uh, because I was a first generation scholar who was looking for support for my transition from high school to college. So she um, referred me and I applied and attended summer launch and it was a perfect fit for me. Um, so my involvement with McNeil as I'm a front office I'm an instructional assist writing program under McNeil and then my involvement on campus more generally is I played um, CU club softball and when I was a junior I did the um, CU and DC program where they take students at CU and you get to live in Washington DC and intern um, full-time there and I interned for Congresswoman Diana DeGette and then right now um, I'm doing an internship through the political science department where I'm interning for state Senator Rachel Zenzinger who has District 19 of Colorado. Thank you, Blaze. Um, Joe, can you go next? I entered McNeil through application when, uh, when I heard of its great resources. And right now I can say that's one of the best decisions I've ever made because I don't know if I'd be here if I hadn't. I served as a residential advisor for Cheyenne Arapaho Hall, which is the business dorm. I'm a member of the McNeil Student Advisory Board, as well as the front office staff. I'm also an affiliate of the Diverse Scholars Program, which is a multicultural community housed in the Leeds School of Business. And I'm a member of Beta Alpha Psi, an honors accounting group also at the Leeds School of Business. I mentioned I was a, I mentioned that I am a business major, but I didn't start out that way. I am an IUT, which is an intra-university transfer. So I did start out in the School of Arts and Science, and then I applied to be in the business school after my freshman year and having to meet all the requirements. So if you have any questions like that, I could be a resource. Great, thank you, Jill. And last but certainly not least, Nuvia. Hi again, everybody. Um, my name is Nuvia Mendoza, a senior double majoring in political science in Spanish. And um, as for my role in McNeil, I work in the front office. Um, and how I got into McNeil, um, I was also a DSF scholar like Blaze, um, and my college advisor at my high school recommended I join the program. Um, and it was a really great fit for me as well um, because I am a first generation student. And as for my involvement on the CU campus at large, um, I'm part of a multicultural Greek organization, Pi Lambda Chi, it's a Latina sorority on campus. And I am also the president of the Multicultural Greek Council. Great, thank you, Nubia. Um, so now we're going to go into our Q&A. If you have any questions about the McNeil Academic Program, please type them into the Q&A um, at the bottom of your screen, or you can chat, send them through chat directly to the panelists. Um, the first question I'm going to ask, and if I can get two students to answer, that would be great, is what is your favorite part about the McNeil Program? I'd say my favorite part about the McNeil program is the community aspect of it. Um, um, like we said, it's a big campus and you can always get lost and end up as another number just on campus and no one really knows of you, but the McNeil academic program has been a nice home away from home in the middle of campus where it's a place I could go and really just meet people who genuinely uh, have, have my best interests as a priority and um, people that are just there to help me all the time. And uh, it's been, that's my favorite part is that I can always get, go there to slow down the pace of campus and kind of move at my own pace. Great. 
And can I get um, one more student? Thank you, Blaze. Yeah, um, my favorite thing about the McNeil Academic Program is, uh, first of all, the leadership opportunities. Um, I love that I have been able to be put in the opportunities of being a front office assistant and an instructional assistant because it allows me to develop my leadership skills, which are definitely transferable to the career that I want to pursue after college. And also, I really love the small class sizes because you're really able to make connections with your peers and also your professors. I um, find through the McNeil program that the best, I am always really close with my instructors because I'm able to go to them very, they're very accessible and um, just being in a small intimate setting while learning is the way that I thrive. So I really love that the McNeil program um, allows for that. Great, thank you, Blaze. So the first question we have is, um, how would guidings work if I am in PES, which is the program for exploratory studies? And so um, as Paula mentioned earlier, we work as coordinators, um, we're not exactly academic advisors, um, but we work hand in hand. It's a lot easier for you to probably schedule an appointment with us. In addition to helping you with registration or your schedule, we help with making sure that you're a well-rounded student. So we're here to help you with time management. We're here to help you um, with anything else or any other questions that you may have regarding campus and connecting you to those resources. Blaze, can you talk a little bit about your relationship with your McNeil coordinator and how that's a little different than your academic advisor? Yeah, so um, I found that when, when you come in to see you, you get a um, first year advisor on main campus, um, but with McNeil, you get your coordinator and that's your coordinator throughout your four years. So um, having a coordinator that is with you throughout your four years and able to um, help you and you meet with them once a semester. So you're really able to ask questions, get the correct guidance. And it's very, um, very personalized to you, which I think is uh, the most important thing. Like when I would walk in, um, I would be like, I would be able to, um, she'd be able to like send me things that were helpful for her and stuff like that. So like, she'd see an opportunity, she send it to me because she knew that's what I'm interested. That kind of thing, whereas from my main campus advisor is more just helping with like choosing classes and things, but I would see um, my coordinator around the halls and say hello, things like that that were very personal to me and it allowed me to have a connection that I knew was there and I knew no matter what, even if I just wanted to go chat, I could go pop into her office and sit down and talk and that was really um, comforting and great throughout my entire four years. Great, thank you, Blaze. Um, the next question, so if you're admitted via the Office of Admissions, does this mean our classes will be modified into smaller classes? Um, no, not necessarily. Again, the McNeil does offer courses within um, STEM, math, writing, and also leadership. So we will pre-enroll you in at least one McNeil course, depending on what your major is, what your interests are, um, and we'll pre-enroll you in that course. That course will be smaller. That doesn't mean that you won't necessarily take larger courses that are on main campus, but we have many resources that can help you along the way. Brian, would you mind going a little bit into the differences between main campus classes and the McNeil classes? Yeah, of course. So typically um, as freshmen, you will be in big lecture halls. Um, a lecture hall will probably consist around 100 to 400 um, students, depending on what classes you take. Um, like, for example, like physics classes take, will house around 200 students and and then around co computer science classes can house around like 400 students. But with our classes, we typically have only a max of 25 students. And that way it's a lot, you have that one-on-one -on -one connection with the professor, they will know your name. You can always discuss with them or have time to discuss like any questions in class and then they typically don't move um, as fast as main campuses. Okay, thank you. Um, so I have another question. What day will the summer launch program be? We're still in the process of making a final schedule for our summer launch program over the summer. Um, it's definitely contingent upon where we are with the pandemic and if we're able to come back onto campus. Uh, Nuya, could, do you mind talking a little bit about what students could expect during our summer launch program? 
Yeah, so um, our summer launch program is like really the first time that um, U.S. students are going to get to interact with um, our fa our faculty and staff for the McNeil program. So your coordinators, um, possibly some of your um, instructors for some of your courses, um, all of the student staff as well, like all of us. Um, and you also get to interact with your cohort. So that's all the people that um, were accepted into the program the same year as you. Um, and a lot of these people will um, be in some of your classes. So it's a really big opportunity to um, build community. And you guys will notice that we bring up community a lot because we really do value that. Um, and aside from that, we also help um, you guys get registered for courses, um, figure anything out with that in case you have issues with that um, and just make sure that you're really prepared for when you start school. Great, thank you, Novia. I'm gonna skip over to the chat for just a second. Um, there was a question, is there a requirement to live on campus for the program? Our director um, did already answer that and the answer is no, McNeil does not have a requirement for you to live on campus. There is a requirement if you are a first year student, but there are forms that you can fill out if you would prefer to live at home. Um, another question, helping a couple of students with their housing application. Do you recommend that students enter a dorm with the RAP or is the McNeil program considered something like a RAP for these students? McNeil is not a RAP. We do not have a housing component to our program, um, but there are several entities um, or several RAPs that are represented on campus. Um, Joe, would you mind talking a little bit about the RAP that you're assigned to um, as a RA? Yeah, sure. So the RAP I'm assigned to, like you said, they are housed in the dorm that the students live in and they provide classrooms for the specific major in the dorms. So you would attend your classes where you live and you would attend your classes with people. You would live with people that also have your major and also live with you. So anytime you need help or anything like that, you have your advisors right outside your front door and you also have people you can work with right next door to you. And they are different from McNeil in that they are specifically for your major and they have all the resources when it comes to tutoring and things readily available for you right where you live. So that would be the gist of the wrap and what it provides really. Thank you. Paula, I know that we have a new relationship with another wrap on campus. Would you mind talking a little bit about that? Sure, yeah, so like I mentioned, we do have a new partnership with the Health Professionals RAP. So one of the benefits of students who are interested in a career in the health professions, um, one of the benefits they find of participating in the Health Professions RAP, or HP RAP as we call it, is that they can take courses um, that fulfill a lot of those prerequisite requirements to health professional schools, and they could take it in their residence hall. So they're taking those classes, they have access to an advisor in-house in their residence hall. They have weekly lecture series with health professionals. Um, they've had PAs and different physicians who come in and talk to just them. So it's really um, a great form of individualized support for students who are interested in the health field. Um, and as I mentioned, we do have a new partnership with them. So we do have a number of beds reserved in that wrap. It's a pretty competitive wrap. A lot of students want to um, live in that residence hall. So if you would like more information, you can reach out to us or visit our website if you would like to apply to participate in that wrap. Great. Thank you, Paula. Um, another question, what resources do we offer for DACA students? Sophie, do you mind answering that question for us? Sure, thank you. Um, so in terms of resources, one of the things McNeil has is a scholarship. We don't have one for everyone in the program. When there's funding available, we open up the scholarship application and students who meet our program requirements are eligible to apply. And students, um, DACA students are eligible for that scholarship. Um, we also are partners with a number of resources on campus. So depending on what the situation is, we are able to connect people with resources on campus. We also work closely with um, the 
CU Boulder Law School and have a close relationship with one of the professors there who is very, um, who is following what's happening with current legislation with DACA. And so she often comes to speak with our students in our um, workshops. So all of us, all of the coordinators, academic coordinators um, get a bit of training and are very familiar with resources available for DACA students. Um, but I would say we do have DACA students in our program and it is our aim to be very welcoming in our program. Thank you. Thank you, Sophie. Um, our next question, how does the abroad program work? Um, so we have a very close relationship with our education abroad program here at CU. Um, and so we often offer workshops. Um, if there's funding available, um, we offer assistance with getting some of the scholarships so that you can study abroad. I'm not sure if any of our panelists have done education abroad. Yes, no, maybe so. Um, but I know that Blaze participated in the CU and DC program. So would you mind talking a little bit about that program? Yeah, so um, specifically with the CU and DC program, it is considered a program that goes abroad, but it's domestically. So we go to um, Washington, DC, obviously. But you apply specifically to that program, but there's a lot of support that McNeil can provide you. Um, I know that we have an education abroad uh, representative who comes and works with students a lot and comes to our power hours and things like that. Um, and even CU in DC, that's how I was connected was through the McNeil Academic Program and they provide a lot of um, resources to help you apply, have a really good application, work on your resume, things like that. But so I applied specifically to the CU and DC program um, and then went through the application process, interviewed, was accepted, and then um, I did all the prerequisites of, I had to find an internship, things like that, but every abroad program is different. This is just specifically for mine, but you go through that um, place yourself kind of, but with the resources of McNeil, and then you uh, do that separately. And then I also got a lot of just moral support on moving across the country, things like that, that were very, very helpful um, in a really scary time. It's scary to leave your home and completely um, go across the nation for four months and live on your own. But uh, through the support of McNeil, it became a lot easier transition. And um, I always knew I could call home and talk to someone and have um, support here. Great. Thank you, Blaze. Um, the next question, is there an Instagram or Facebook group that one can join to meet staff and new students coming in? That's a really great question. Laura Lee, would you mind talking a little bit about our social media platforms? Of course, we have both a Facebook and an Instagram. We do our best to really interact with students through both platforms. So if you do want to follow us um, on Facebook, it's just McNeil Academic Program, and then make sure you, join, you like the CU Boulder page. And then on Instagram, again, McNeil Academic Program as well. Um, it's a great platform right now. We're featuring a lot of our staff and students on a daily basis, so just kind of learning how they're transitioning and also learning how they're actually taking classes right now is really what we're focusing on right now. But throughout the year, we also post a lot of reminders about of our, our upcoming events and just fun tidbits of what happened during events as well. Great, thank you, Laura Lee. Um, the next question, will coordinators replace the advisors we are assigned? No, we will work um, together along with your advisor and you to make sure that you have a great academic experience here at CU um, and within McNeil. Um, as Blaze attested to earlier, your coordinator kind of gives you that personalized experience. Your advisor is more concerned about um, helping you get your class schedule together, um, and we will do that plus much, much more. So thank you for that question. Um, the next question, does this program have people of color? Um, the, question, the answer is absolutely. If you can look at the panel, I don't know if you can see all of us at the same time, but you'll see that we come from a variety of races and ethnicities. Um, so Joe, would you mind taking on that question? Because I know you mentioned how McNeil can be a home away from home. Can you talk a little bit more about that experience? Uh, yes, I can. So for 
McNeil versus main campus. I'd say before I entered CU, I uh, did have, did experience a lot of diverse diversity around me. And CU was really sort of a culture shock entering it because it was, I mean, predominantly one way. And uh, when I was, when I get to a McNeil academic program, it's more what I'm accustomed to in that there's many different people, many different backgrounds. Um, I can really find someone from anywhere and so many different perspectives are brought together in the McNeil Academic Program. So that's really where I come from when I talk about how it is a home away from home. I'm able to meet different people, different backgrounds, different stories, and we're all able to all come together in the McNeil Program and really work towards one common goal, and that is our future academic success. Great, thank you, Joe. Um, the next question is sort of about dual majors. Someone is interested in the physics program, but also potentially the computer science program, um, and was wondering about research program abroad and in the States. Um, that's a very good question. Um, we are here as part of your coordinators to help you do some of the exploration um, into what you deem best for your academic as well as your career or future graduate goals. Um, we do offer lots of programming regarding research, um, how you can get involved in research um, on campus. Um, and we also talk a lot about how research is a transferable skill. Oftentimes when we talk about the word research, it seems overwhelming. It seems like a large project that a lot of our students can be intimidated by. Um, but instead, we try to show you how you can use those skills in research and change them into skills that you can use within your professions, um, other employment opportunities, or other leadership opportunities. Um, that goes along with the question that was sort of asked in the chat about connection to undergraduate research professors. Yes, we will help you along with that. Again, we offer a couple of workshops along that area. Um, we also highly value um, working relationships across uh, campus with our faculty and instruction, um, and you will build those relationships throughout later years. Um, I believe that Sophie, Paula, and myself can attest to writing letters of recommendation for our students because of the relationships that we've built over the years, um, as well as your McNeil instructor would be happy to do that for you um, once you're ready to move on to graduate studies um, with, or even if you're just going into the workforce. Um, I hope that answers your question. If not, feel free to give us another hit in the Q&A or the chat, or we can have someone give you a call afterwards. Um, the next question, is the course we are pre-enrolled and chosen by the coordinators or do we choose it? Sophie, would you mind answering that question for us? Um, yeah, sure, of course. Is a course, okay. So we're gonna work closely with you during summer lunch to talk about the courses we're offering. And we do have a link to the, the, the courses we're offering in the fall. Um, it's on our website. So we will send a follow-up link after this webinar to you. So we'll work closely with you to figure out which McNeil course makes most sense. So our classes are small, like Paula said. We have no more, usually closer to 20, 16 to 20 students in our classes, no more than 22. And, um, Students will take one course in the fall, at least one course in the fall and one in the spring. And so all of these courses are gonna to count towards your graduation requirements. So we wanna talk with you. You'll probably get a phone call from our students again asking, what major are you thinking about at this time? Um, we understand that students come in with a particular major and students usually change their major about three times before they graduate. So we're gonna ask, what are you kind of interested in? And some people don't know, and that's completely okay. Um, and then from that, we'll base our recommendation in terms of classes. You'll probably take a math, a writing, or um, chemistry or economics with us. So all of those classes um, support students who want to transfer into engineering or business or who are in arts and sciences and need to meet major requirements 
um, or general ed requirements. So we're gonna work closely with you. I think there's another question about summer lunch and given the stay at home orders, we're waiting to hear what the outcome is going to be. So we really would love to have an in-person summer launch the last week in June so that when you register over the summer, you um, we've met with you and you have a good idea of what to expect so that you can go ahead and register in one on one of the um, it's registration will happen in July. So we want to get you fully prepared for that. Great. Thank you. Um, the next question is, so how would this program work with scholarships? So Sophie did mention that we do offer a scholarship within McNeil. Um, we have about a fourth of our students that receive this funding. It is for $1,000 per semester, so long as you continue to meet our McNeil um, requirements. Um, as of now, the application is not open. Um, we hope to open this application within the next couple of weeks um, once we get a better understanding of when we possibly will be back on campus. Um, and then we will, we will be sending more information about our scholarship. You will definitely hear more about it during the summer launch program. Um, next, does the McNeil program offer academic scholarships for every grade? So. Um, the McNeil Scholarship is offered um, as, when you apply, if we have funding available, um, you automatically receive it every semester so long as you're meeting your program requirements. Um, and I know I've mentioned that program requirements a couple of times. So um, Blaze, would you mind talking a little bit about the program requirements um, to maintain your McNeil Scholarship? Of course. So um, every semester, the requirements are very similar. So you do two power hours, and that is um, power hours are the workshops like uh, Dr. Johnson was talking about, um, where we bring in uh, different groups on campus, different people, um, so that you're able to, there's like, um, we do one for Black History Month, for Dia de los Muertos, things like that, that allow you to connect with students get um, professional help, things like that. And so those are power hours and you do two of those this semester. Um, and again, you choose from a lot of them and I typically choose the ones that I think are going to impact me in the best way. You are also supposed to meet with your coordinator once a, once a semester um, and that's your academic coordinator who uh, I was talking about earlier that you're with your entire four years. And then for your first year, you meet with, uh, once a semester, you meet with your peer mentor. And that, um, Brian is a peer mentor, so he can talk a little bit more about that, but you meet with them um, and they support you as well. So um, if Brian, you wanna talk about that a little more, that'd be super helpful. Cool. All right, so basically um, with the, what a peer mentor is, is basically you guys are chosen uh, under us based on like what your interests is or your majors. So to, uh, for example, since I'm an economics majors, I could typically um, shadow over 12 students and then I'll shadow over like business students, maybe um, finance majors or even like economics majors like myself. But typically um, you meet with us or meet with me or, or my other colleagues um, once a semester just to see how you guys are doing, what, how our classes are like, how's college like, how are you adjusting? We're so basically just, um, we're st um, don't forget that I'm a student as well. So I, any struggle that you guys go through, I go through as well. So I'm just basically here just to make sure you're doing okay, make sure that um, you guys are finding your classes um, well, make sure you're doing all the requirements in the McNeil program, um, and just make sure that um, you guys are just, um, I guess, well, tr um, well transitioned to college. Great, thank you, Brian. Um, the next question is, what's the enrollment deposit about? Is that for the program? It is not for the program that is your deposit to enroll in the institution. Um, Paula, would you mind going over the enrollment deposit again and also how students can potentially defer? Absolutely, yeah. So the enrollment deposit, that's to confirm your intent to enroll at C Boulder. That is a deposit saying, yes, I will be here in the fall. This is an institution that I am attending. Um, in order to request an extension for that, you would need to contact the Office of Admissions. Um, again, we can help you with that. We can send you their contact information. You could just email their general 
um, email listed on their website as well. After you graduate, that enrollment deposit is sent back to you. Um, but that's, yeah, that's not for the McNeil program. That's just for CU Boulder as an institution for you to confirm your intent to enroll. Great. Thank you, Paula. Um, the next question, is there a recommended hall to apply to with McNeil? Um, our students really do live across the entire campus. Um, so our, our students aren't typically clumped together, although some of at times they can be. Um, Nubia, can you talk a little bit about your first year experience um, and what hall you lived in? Yeah, so um, when I was a freshman, I lived in Darley North, so it's one of the um, dorms in the Williams Village area. Um, you'll notice when you're um, applying for housing, um, there's um, housing on main campus, which is um, like where all of most of your classes will be and things like that. And then there's also Williams Village, which has like a whole number of other dorms. Um, and in terms of housing, um, when you go through your application, there are um, there are dorms that are specific um, to majors. So, um, for example, like Joe, um, for Cheyenne Arapaho, that's a business um, dorm. Um, and there's other wraps. And then there's also um, dorms that um, focus on different interests. So if you are someone that likes to be very active and likes to do things outdoors, um, that was something that I expressed interest in. And that's something that my dorm did a lot. They did a lot of activities regarding um, just like team building and activities outside. Um, and there's also, um, there's also a whole other variety of dorms for different interests. So whether it's something specific to your major or your interest, um, you'll definitely find a community that fits well for you. Thank you, Nuvia. Um, so the next question is, so if we are admitted through the admissions office, are we in the program automatically? The, the answer is yes, you are automatically in the program. Um, there's no additional applications that you need to complete to be in the program. Brian, do you mind talking a little bit about your experience being admitted into McNeil? Oh yeah, um, so when I first started to you, um, I probably had you guys, I probably had the same questions as you guys. I was like, what's McNeil? What does that mean for me? But I think that it's one of the greatest opportunities that you guys will have. Um, because when you got through admissions, got to McNeil through admissions, like you're going to have, basically McNeil is going to be your family for the next four, four or five years, depending on how long you guys take. Um, but, um, it's going to be there for you for all four years. You're always going to have these same exact coordinators. You're always going to have the same, you might even be really close to your peer mentor if you wanted to, you could be close to your professor, your instructors, you can be close to the IAs that you work with. So um, I don't think it's a bad thing that you are accepted through admissions. It's just, I think it's like a great opportunity and like a very privileged thing to be, to be accepted through admissions. Great, thank you, Brian. Um, we have a couple of more questions. Um, where are some of the locations for the group retreats? That's a really great question. Um, our group retreats are for our first year students. They are typically on the CU Boulder campus. Um, I'm gonna turn this over to our director, Sophie, to talk to you a little bit more about the group retreats um, and why we have them in your first year. Sure, um, so we have two retreats for our first year students. The first one is in the fall and our retreats are on campus and they're about three or four hours. So we're not, um, because we do have a large class, it's not overnight in the mountains at a retreat center. So we're gonna meet on campus. And the first one is on campus, outdoors, um, doing facilitated by the challenge course. And so that's an opportunity for us to meet each other, for you to meet other students in the program and to start talking about the adjustment to CU Boulder and the adjustment to college. You know, this last year, I heard a lot of students say, I'm overwhelmed. And part of that is the excitement of being on your own, but also the challenges that come with it and managing yourself and being a student and, and, what, and adjusting to what CU Boulder asks of students. Um, so that's an, so all of these, both retreats, all of our events are, we want students to learn and grow from them. And it's also an opportunity to meet other students. The second retreat is in the spring. 
And that's a time for us to reflect on the first semester, to celebrate successes, and to talk about how much of what you're going through is common among other students and how can you use each other as a resource, what resources are out there, and, and to kind of regroup and um, figure out how you want to, how, how, how's it going in terms of redefining yourself and being a scholar on campus and, and how your goals continue to evolve as you're a student at CU. So our events are really to allow you an opportunity to meet people and to really think about, think deeply about where you are on your journey, on your academic journey. Thank you, Sophie. The other thing I want to add to that is that our events, um, including the retreats, are very student focused. Um, and we do ask for your feedback at the end of the event so that we can work continuously to improve our events. Joe mentioned earlier that he's part of the student advisory board. Um, he plays a very key role in making sure that the programming that we offer is exactly what, it, what you would get from it, what you can gain from it to make your experience the best at CU Boulder. So thank you for that question. Um, we have our final question. Um, so last but not least, um, how could the McNeil academic program help with my major? Um, in this particular case, the major is communications. Um, so I'm going to turn that over to Joe because he has a little experience um, coming in sort of as an undecided student and then moving over to his major choice. Um, my answer, I'd say, yeah, McNeil would help you a lot because it helped me a lot and it's not even geared towards, um, business students per se. Um, because right now, as you can see, I'm a part of this panel. Like I said, I was a part of the student advisory board as well as the McNeil front office and being, um, serving in those positions has allowed me to kind of develop professionally um, um, and, and something like communications here, you could um, build relationships, learn how to work in a professional setting, talk to coordinators, talk to advisors, um, things like that where you really just improve around people and you're offered opportunities where you can grow um, wherever you want to grow and if that's communications then you have the ability to do so because you have the opportunities to work with other people. Great, thank you. Nubia, would you mind talking a little bit about, I know you're a dual major, how did you come to that decision to become a dual major? Yeah, so um, I didn't start off as a dual major. Um, I had only declared political science um, my freshman year and I didn't um, declare my Spanish major until your second year. I think a lot of times, um, especially when you're first coming into college, you feel the pressure of wanting to know, um, knowing what you want to do, but um, I just want to reassure everybody that um, you don't have to necessarily you know, declare your major right away or stick with the major that you maybe have now. Um, I was able to participate in just different events and was, and was exposed to different opportunities that piqued my interest. Um, and I found out that the Spanish major that I declared, um, because there are two different ones, um, mine, focused on, mine focuses on interpreting and translating. Um, and it was something that I've just always done my whole life. Um, as um, first gen and having immigrant parents is something I was used to doing. Um, and I found that it could be something I could really apply to um, what I want to do. Um, and so just being able to talk with my coordinators, that was a big help for me as well. Um, talking to them and making sure that like having two majors was something that I would be able to accomplish in the time that I was going to spend at CU um, was a big key part of it as well. So I think um, all the different components that we offer and like having a coordinator and things like that really help you find your path and don't be pressured to figure that out right away. Great, thank you. And Sophie, could you talk a little bit about the diversity program in the community, in the School of Communication? I'm sorry, College sure. of Communication. Yeah, so um, CU Boulder has what we call the CU Lead Alliance and it stands for um, Leadership Excellence Academic uh, achievement and diversity. And so we have a strong partnership 
with the LEAD program in communications. And so we can connect you with that program. You could work with them in terms of figuring out what the requirements are to transfer, but how can you start getting experience in that college while still um, while you're still in the process of transferring into that program. If you are already in that program, you will likely work with that program instead of McNeil, but we can talk about that. Um, so for uh, if, if you're in, if you're working towards transferring into a different college other than program of exploratory studies or other than arts and sciences, McNeil has a lot of experience working um, in this area. So for communications, we are familiar with the courses that you need to take to get into the program because all of the programs require specific courses and a particular GPA. And so we'll work with you in making sure you take the proper courses, courses that are going to count towards your graduation requirements, as well as being in a situation so you can reach the grades that you need and make sure you get those grades to, to successfully transfer into those colleges. So we're, we, we'd be happy to connect you with our um, with the person, the coordinator of the LEAD program over in communications. Thanks, Sharon. Right. No problem. Um, the next question is about um, a student thinking about majoring in engineering and how McNeil can help. Um, Sophie kind of just answered that the same things that we offer to move to the School of Communication would be the same for engineering. Um, if you're really interested in engineering, um, we would match you with courses in McNeil um, that would map onto you um, meeting the requirements for you to transfer over. Um, we will give you the resources that you may need to make sure that you meet the GPA requirements um, so that you can um, move over to the College of Engineering as well. Um, we're almost out of time. Oh, we are over time. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and answer um, these last two questions, are there any sororities or fraternities with McNeil? The answer would be no. However, Paula, Nuvia, and Laura Lee are all with multicultural um, sororities, um, and they would be available to talk to you more about how to get into those pathways if you would like to pledge um, on campus. Um, how hard is it to be involved and live off campus? Um, does anyone wanna take that one on? Um, I can talk about it quickly. Oh, want to? Go ahead, please. Um, so, so I um, commute from Denver actually, um, and now I commute. It's about a forty-minute drive one way, and I find that the way you s structure your um, schedule is really important. Um, it hasn't been that hard for me being involved living off campus because I. Um, build in that necessary time to connect with other students, to um, go to the library, things like that, because uh, I know that I'll be at home otherwise. So I don't think it's hard. I think it's just a different way of living where you're not consistently accessible to the campus, but building your schedule and um, being involved in things in a way that allows you to uh, do what you want to do. If you want to have a break in between two of your classes so that you can go hang out with your friends, then you want to structure it that way because that's the best way to allow yourself to still be involved. Thank you, Blaze. Um, for the pre-law path, how can McNeil help? Um, so that would be, you would work with your coordinator to make sure that you're taking courses. But in addition to that, um, we've newly developed a pre-law program um, so that you can attend workshops that would connect you um, with, I think we've recently had someone from the law school admissions um, department come talk to our students, um, current law school students, um, and those that are working in the profession. Um, so McNeil can help you build those connections. Even if you're not in law, we also offer the emerging health programs as Paula mentioned earlier. So if you're on the medical track um, or any um, pre-health professional track, um, then we can provide assistance with that. So you will work very closely with your coordinator and then you will also attend the workshops that we have available um, that may help you along that path to get into law school.
Last but not least, can we leave our emails? The answer is absolutely. And I am going to turn that over to Laura Lee to tell you more about how to get in contact with us. Thank you all so much for your questions. This was really great. We hope that you um, had an opportunity to learn more about the McNeil program. Thank you, Cheryl. So yeah, there's two ways that you all can communicate with us. So we have this request a call function that we are having. You can fill out this form on our website. Again, our website is an excellent place to look at any of the additional information that we have on there. Please take a look at the Joining McNeil tab. That's where you will find the majority of the resources that we've all referred to during this uh, webinar. However, we will be sending out an email with all the resources that we've talked about. So please take a look at our website. So with this, the request to call, you just fill it out. It's very simple. Basically, we will just give you a time slot that we will give you a call back and we'll have any of our students give you a call, especially if you wanna put on there, hey, I talked to, I saw the webinar and I wanna talk more with Brian about something. Just put it on there and we can request Brian to give you a call back as well. You can also just shoot us a quick email. Um, as all our students work in the front office, they actually are the people who read the emails when we get the big emails that are sent through the McNeil email. And our email is just mcneilprogram at colorado.edu, which most of our correspondence to you all has come through this email. So all of you should have access to it. Go ahead and just shoot us a quick email, especially if you have any questions. I know a few of you had a questions about fraternities or sororities. You can just send it through there and we can answer it. Um, and any other questions that you may feel you want more information on, just send us a quick email. As of now, since we are working remotely, that is the quickest way to get a hold of us. Um, you can call us uh, and leave a voicemail. It just may result in a delayed response since we're not in the office. If you are still wondering if McNeil or even CU is the right choice, please don't hesitate in reaching out to us if you want more information. We will be sending, like I said, a follow-up email with all these resources and things we've mentioned. So if you have any questions, please respond to that email or just send us a quick email. Thank you for joining us today. Um, it was great having a lot of you guys on here. It's awesome. Yeah, we're always here if you have any questions. Thank you.